Mine at all. It? It's 46. Alright, they got like 20 minutes-ish. Oh. I could be late to math. I could be late to math. Yeah. Okay, yeah, go Okay, so we have 11 piglets. Um, we just sent seven of them off to market. So we recently have four right now. They're outside just playing in the mud. We, all of us we went in, we got to castrate them, dock their tails, and clip their ears. What is that called? Clipping the ears. Clipping the ears. <laughs> so notching. So notching, we got to mark them it. and identify them. So this is the honey extractor that we've mentioned. It's um, basically you just open this and they have the honeycombs from the, the beehives that we have, about 40, 42 of them. Um, over here are our, like I said, industrial sized mixers. This is a convection oven. We use for some of the high, um, higher scale things that we do as well. We have a whole unit on food microbiology. So students um, research an individual pathogen. So we go through all of them, Vibrio, E. coli. All of the kids get an overall um, picture of the types of pathogens and how to avoid the specific ones and what, the ca you know, what kind of um, illnesses they cause and things like that. The junior year, they're learning a lot about the animals and the anatomy and physiology. And then the senior pathway spends a lot of time with the production side of things and the animal products that come from them and the um, industry itself and how the industry is still changing definitely within their education and their lifetime. We do study HACCP plans and they've developed HACCP plans for some of the foods that we do produce here. We both have our Illinois State of Sanitation license and that um, kind of gives us a competitive edge over, you know, if we apply to a job that is specific in food industry or food management, we kind of have obviously an edge, especially being so young with that. Just having to like, you know, learn all the foodborne illnesses, learning like what temperature of each meat it should be, when it's ready, what like what order of food should be on the shelves, and other like cross contamination and things like that. We always joke about this because ever since we got our food sanitation license, it was like we're really overly aware of everything that's going on. Like we can't go to a Chinese buffet anymore <laughs> because we know like that shouldn't be there. That's not right. So it's kind of um, interesting. Well, to be honest with you, most kids who come here. Uh, don't see themselves in the agricultural industry and we have to kind of convince them that there's a role for them. They don't have the exposure. They don't have any idea of where they could fit in that. And so this school is a really unique um, fit. The agricultural industry needs to diversify. You know, typically it came from what you're talking about, the rural, you know, farm boy who would go to U of I and get a degree in ag and then, you know, go back into the rural and, you know, whatever. Okay, I grew up in the heart of Chicago. Um, I've never really had any background with animals, never had any pets. Outside of uh, gardening in our own backyards or like planting flowers, we have, uh, I, speaking for myself, I don't have any knowledge prior to when I came here. There's no background in agriculture whatsoever. 90% of the classmates have never touched a live horse before the, the pathway. And understanding the difference between a dog and a cat and livestock. You know, it's, it's, a, different, it's a different way of being around animals and, and understanding their, when animals have a purpose versus just being a pet, they are treated in very different ways. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the truth of it is um, production has become so efficient that we don't need very many people back in production, but we need a lot of people in the industry. And there's less and less rural people for them to draw from, so they have to start from another pool. How do they get those people interested in agriculture? Well, to give them exposure at this age is just an incredible benefit to these kids, as well as to the universities and businesses to be able to try to get really highly qualified people. So what are to go into? Uh, international agriculture and development. Uh, developing uh, food systems for uh, emerging countries. So working on their land systems and food systems and uh, teaching people uh, sustainability practices. Yeah, I could do poultry science or I could do veterinarian science. I haven't really figured out which one it is, but it might lean more towards poultry because I work with them a lot. In the animal um, production side, their senior year, we really do look a lot at the economics of the care and then talk about how humane care isn't just because you love the animals, it's because you're going to make money off of healthy animals, not unhealthy animals. 
And so um, I kind of able, able to convince all parties in the classroom, whether it's that they love the animals or whether they want to make money off of the animals, that the humane care is the only way to go. Yeah, I've never had any hands-on experience or opportunities with farm animals or even some domestic house companions before I came here. But now I even have my own farm animals and I'm in the middle of the city.